Hi guys, it's Jack with FromJoeToPro.com and today I'm starting a brand new series of lessons that's going to be all about analyzing chord progressions and making uh, soloing scale choices. So I'm really excited to get started with it. And although I'll end up covering all different kinds of chord progressions, one of the main tools we're going to use is the real book. Okay. So it's such a great collection of songs. It's, it's all, you know, all this jazz music is such a great blend of diatonic music and blues influences that we can really learn a lot by going through it. So whether you're a piano player, a guitar player, a saxophonist, some other, you know, instrumentalist, whether you're, you know, you play chords or you just play individual melody notes, it's really, really important that you can understand your chord progressions and know what scales you could use to solo with on top of them. So this is what this is going to be all about for us. And <clears throat> you can pick this up, you know, of course, Amazon or Musician's Friend or somewhere, you can find a hard copy or you can, you know, you can buy a, a downloadable version as well. But either which way, I really believe you're going to want a, you know, printed out version of it to look at as we go through our songs. So, um, why am I doing this on the piano today since, you know, on my website I primarily am, I'm, I'm a guitar teacher, right? Well, the piano is such a great tool because, of course, you can play harmony and melody at the same time. So that makes the piano a much easier tool to kind of teach on uh, as far as concepts go. So that's why we're doing that today. So um, as we go through our songs, as we go through our jazz tunes, um, one, one of the things I found really interesting about jazz music is I kind of always thought, oh, jazz grew out of blues, which is, you know, partly true, but it, it's not really that simple because, you know, so much of the standards kind of were written by guys that might have been, you know, European immigrants or children of European immigrants. And a lot of the music in the standard tunes, they're actually not that bluesy, not in terms of the construction of the songs. They're more diatonic, meaning the chords are built out of the scales. And uh, a blues systems uh, kind of mess with that a little bit. They're more dominant seven based, mixolydian based. Um, you can have chords that don't all belong to one key in, in like a 12 bar blues, right? So that's a, kind of a different system. So if any of this seems like it's a little bit overwhelming as we go through, then I highly recommend you go to fromjotopro.com. And even if you're not a guitar player, if you're a piano player or a saxophonist or what have you, if you don't have a strong grasp of, of uh, basic theory concepts, diatonic theory, and then blues and rock concepts, the site can really, really, really help you. It's super inexpensive, and you'll learn a lot from going through the more kind of rigorous version of everything. You know, It's easy to understand, but it's just more comprehensive, and I break things down a little bit more simply. Whereas, you know, for today's lesson, I'm just going to assume that you can kind of follow what, what I'm talking about. And at any point it's difficult, I'll, I'll refer you back to uh, from joetopro.com. Okay, so as we cruise through autumn leaves, we'll kind of see, hey, it's not really bluesy, it's more diatonic. Okay, so that was the chord progression, and we, and we had, uh, you know, you can, of course we can do it with a melody. just mostly concern ourselves with the chord progression. So as we cruise through, I see an A minor 7 to a D7, a G major 7, C major 7, nice little sequence, F sharp minor 7 flat 5 to B7 to E minor. Okay? So let's make sure we can understand that. In jazz, we're always looking for 2, 5, 1 chord progressions. They're the most common chord progression in jazz. And those are diatonic chord progressions, meaning the chords come from a key. The keys uh, often in jazz tunes change rather quickly. I chose uh, this particular song to start with because they don't. You know, there's really only a couple keys in this song versus a lot of jazz tunes will have, you know, like five, six different keys in them. This has just got two. The key signature for the, this piece is F sharp, which suggests the key of G major or E minor. And what we're going to see as we go through is that, that those are the keys that we're in. The, the G major shifting to its relative minor of E minor. So that's what makes this a kind of a basic tune. We don't go too far afield, not a lot of key changes, and when we do, they're, it's a pretty basic one, you know, just to go from the major to the relative minor. Okay? So 
In jazz tunes, you're always going to be looking for two, five, ones. That's the most common chord progression. In a major scale, a two chord is a minor seven, a five chord is a dominant seven, and the one chord would be major or major seven. Well, we start off with A minor seven to D seven to G major seven. So when you see a minor seven and then a dominant seven, you just gotta kinda ask yourself, hey, could that be a two five? And you just do the math. Well, A is the two of G. Is D the five of G? G, A, B, C, D, yes it is. So, hey, the A and the D to the G, that all makes sense as just a two, five, one. So, then we have a C major seven. C major seven could be the four of the key of G, G, A, B, C. Or it could be the six, E, F, G, A, B, C of the key of E minor. So I would say it's, it's a, a pivot chord. It's kind of going to transition us to the next key. Speaking of which, the next chord, F sharp minor seven flat five. Yeah, that could be a seven chord of the key of G, but you don't get a lot of seven chords in, uh, in uh, major keys. And then you go to a B seven. Well, that doesn't belong to the key of G. G, A, B. Be, would be a three chord. Three chords are minor sevens. It's a dominant seven, okay? Sometimes in jazz tunes, dominant sevens show like a bluesy influence, like the dominant seven just gives a blues flavor. But more often than not, it's, it's what's called a borrowed dominant. The five, it's a five from a different key, and it's pushing us to a one, right? In this case, B7 is the five of E, and in this particular instance, E minor. So we have a two, five, one of E minor. And that's our chord progression for the A section, which we're mostly going to concentrate on. So we have a 2-5-1, a pivot chord, which could be a 4 or a 6, and then a 2-5-1 of E minor. And it's a nice little sequence, okay? So that's our analysis of the key changes for the song. Okay, so now let's start digging in and talking about, well, how will we solo over this? Well, we know the two keys. We're in G major for the first three or four chords. We're in E minor for the, the last uh, four chords or so. So we could just play those two scales, G major and E minor. What type of E minor though, right? Because minor scales have, you've got, you know, your natural minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor. Well, let's explore a couple different choices. The simpler one physically would just say, hey, what if I just play the G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, which is both G major and E natural minor. Okay, that could work over the whole song. Over the two, five, one. Into the, into the C chord, the transition chord, it works great. When we go to the two, five, one of E minor though, end up with a clash if we do the natural minor, which is okay. When we go to the five chord, the five chord is going to have a D sharp in it, which is the leading tone of E minor, and the five is pushing us to the one. But if we use the E natural minor scale, we'd have a D natural, which from, you know, from blues music, we're used to these clashes where we have minor thirds in our like minor blues scales over dominant seven chords that have major thirds. So Maybe it's from blues that it becomes acceptable to use the natural minor over the dominant seven, but it's certainly a choice that works. It's a clash, but it's okay. So that's our first choice, guys. And, and both on uh, my website from joetopro.com and uh, you know, in my personal teaching with one-on-one -on -one with students, I talk about game plans a lot, you know, so, a lot of times people like don't know or don't want to know all the different scale choices because it's overwhelming, right? Well, that's not probably the best approach if you want to keep growing as a musician. You want to know what your choices are, right? Then when you start to realize all your choices and how many there are, it's overwhelming. So then the, the way to deal with that is to have a plan, have a game plan, right? So if you have a game plan, you, you kind of make your decision, hey, I'm going to explore th this set of choices or this particular choice this time through on my chord progression. That's your game plan, okay? So I would say our first game plan is to just stick with the one set of notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, which is G major and it's also E natural minor. And again, you can hear it sounds great. <laughs> Nothing
nothing wrong with it, right? Even though we have that clash, it works great, okay? So um, if you can record yourself playing the chords on your guitar or on a piano, if you can use a software program like Band in the Box and plug in the chords, or maybe they already have the tune pre-programmed for you. I mean, I can just play the chords for you here as well. You know, you can practice soloing over that. Probably you're better off with the software program version or, or recording yourself playing the chords. But, um, either which way, explore that first option of using that basic approach of just the one set of notes, G major, E natural minor. Okay, let's move on. So our next choice would be uh, to reflect the, the chords a little bit more. When you go to that B7, you got that D sharp. Well, what version of E minor has a D sharp in it? E harmonic minor. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D sharp, E. So then another choice would be, and you can start throwing that scale in over the F sharp minor seven flat five if you wanted to. Uh, and again, as you'll see, like this is why I talk about those game plans. Already we have so many choices. You could stay with the E natural minor over the F sharp minor seven flat five and then go to the E harmonic. You could stay with the E natural minor over both, or you could play the E harmonic over both of those two chords, right? So again, it gets overwhelming, right? So that's why have a plan. So the second plan I'm going to suggest, you, you do the harmonic minor over both the 2 and the 5 of E minor. And it doesn't clash any, with anything because the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 has a C in it, so does the harmonic minor scale. The B7 has a D sharp, so does the E harmonic minor scale. So then your second scale choice would be something like this. G major. minor once that F sharp minor 7 flat 5 kicked in. Okay, so explore that second game plan. So we have a second game plan to check out. Okay, for our A section of the song. All right, so let's move on. If you've had a chance to explore those first two scale options, if just in theory and concepts, or hopefully even you've had a chance to practice them, well, what else could we do, right? Well, we can make the tunes a little bit more uh, kind of pop rock sounding um, if we use different types of scales. So instead of using the full diatonic, you know, G major or E minor, we could use G major blues and E minor blues. And that give it a more of a little bit of a poppy rock sensibility, even though they're jazz tunes. So, you know, when we get rid of the four and the seven of the G major to make it a G uh, major pen, and we throw the B flat in, the minor third to make it a blues scale, we, it, it gives us E, you know, G, A, B flat, B, B, E, right? E minor blues is the same notes as G major blues, okay? It's the one minor third, four, five, flat, seven, E, G, A, B, D of E, right? Well, it's the same notes. The B flat is the flat five. That's the main blues note of a minor blues. The B flat is the minor third of G. That's the main blues note of a major blues. So exact same notes. We're going to end up with a clash, just like we have with the natural minor scale. When we go to the B7, That clash sounds good, okay? So that's our next choice. The G major slash E minor blues over the whole progression. Okay, and you can hear how that sounds good. To me, that always sounds like Elton John, you know, uh, at least that's how I picture his music sounding in my memory, which is, you know, jazzier chords, but kind of like simple blues rock scales on the top end. You know, that's how I kind of picture his playing. Right? So that's yet another plan for you to explore. Okay, so, so far we have 
G major slash E natural minor, second step, G major into E harmonic minor, maybe natural minor back when you hit the minor chord, third choice, G major blues to E minor blues, and again, a lot of these choices are simple because they're, they're the same notes in both sets of scales. You just have to use your ear to help you to determine, hey, which one sounds like the root, you know, G or E. Okay? All right, so if you want to go a little deeper down the rabbit hole with me, we can start playing a little bit more to the chords. So I do that in a variety of ways. Uh, diatonically, it's through arpeggios and a more rockish kind of style, which I like in my uh, jazz tunes, it's through shifting pentatonics, okay? So, and again, at my website from jodapro.com, I have an entire module called the Soloist Game Plan, where I go through, uh, you know, more basic, kind of like rock chord progressions and gospel and country, and just kind of basic, small little chunks of chord progressions, and I get into all the same type of stuff that we're doing here today. So feel free to check that out. And again, you don't have to be a guitar player, because you know the books, going through the scales and the chord progressions and understanding it, it applies no matter what you play. If you play, again, saxophone, guitar, flute, piano, uh, you know, whatever, bagpipes, it doesn't matter, right? You, you play melodies, you're gonna get a lot out of it. So go ahead and check it out. And, uh, and, and in the meantime, let's keep going with this lesson.